We're going to take a break this week from the portfolio series because there's just been so much going on in the news that I've been asked to go over. So apologies for the interruption and I'll hopefully get back on track next week. But today I think it's important to focus on a company that I've discussed several times in the past on this channel before, which is Icon Enterprises, ticker IEP. Last week a company by the name of Hindenburg Research released a short report on Icon Enterprises and they make a lot of accusations in this report against Carl and how he operates his holding company. The short report alleges that Carl significantly overvalues his own company assets and that Icon Enterprises operates as a Ponzi-like structure in which money's taken from new investors and it's being used to pay out dividends to old investors. There's a handful of other accusations in this report, including the lack of coverage of IEP by financial institutions, as well as some issues that they're going to face with debt. But the conclusion made by Hindenburg is that the dividend this company currently pays is not sustainable. So in today's video, I want to go over some of the main points of this report, since I know a lot of people are curious about investing in this company right now. With their stock plunging more than 26% for the year, IEP now offers an insanely attractive dividend yield of over 21%. If you're not too familiar, Icon Enterprises is a conglomerate that operates in the investment, energy, automotive, food packaging, real estate, home fashion, and pharmaceutical businesses. It's owned by legendary investor Carl Icon, who's developed a reputation as being one of the most successful investors in American history. He's known for being a corporate raider, which is someone who buys a large stake in a company and then uses their voting rights to make changes to the company's board or how they operate. If you're interested, there is a good documentary on HBO Max that goes through his career of being a corporate raider and making changes to companies that have resulted in increased shareholder value for millions of investors. But Icon Enterprises is the company where he performs all of his deals and it's basically his legacy. One of the first points made in this report is that one of the only financial institutions that's been covering Icon's company for the last few years is a bank called Jefferies. This point is true and it's something that I've wondered for a long time about Icon Enterprises. Considering the fact it's such a large company ran by a celebrity investor, I always wondered why this company received so little attention from Wall Street analysts. You can see over the last three years that only one financial institution, again Jefferies, has given any kind of rating to this stock. What makes things worse for Carl is that we know he's had a personal relationship with this bank and its management team since the 1980s. I brought this point up in the past, but it's my theory that the reason more financial institutions haven't been taking a deeper look into this stock is because it's a much more difficult company to analyze than others. People have said that Icon Enterprises is really more like an exchange-traded fund than a company because of just how many different types of businesses that Icon Enterprises holds. This conglomerate owns a meat packaging business, an automotive parts business, and a company called Vivis, which develops treatments for obesity and sleep disorders. They also own West Point Homes, which produces home textile products, as well as other various real estate companies that own rental properties and commercial real estate. So other than just looking at the financial statements for this company, the odds of an analyst at a financial institution being an expert in all these different sectors is pretty slim. But by far, the largest holding Icon Enterprises has is their financial company, which is where nearly all the allegations in the Hindenburg report are made. One of the biggest points made about IEP is that it's significantly overvalued compared to similar companies. When this report was released, you can see that at the time it was trading for $50.82 per share, but its NAV per share was only $15.96. It's currently trading at the highest premium for any other fund out there. Now the truth is that some funds do trade at pretty sizable premiums if they do have a long track record of solid dividends and performance. For example, the PCM fund by PIMCO almost always trades at a pretty sizable premium because it's been able to provide solid monthly dividends for decades. So Hindenburg Research believes that investors are willing to pay such a high premium for that $2 per quarter dividend and for being able to basically invest alongside with Carl Icahn. But according to the report, that dividend isn't sustainable because another point they make is that since 2014, $1.5 billion in cash dividends were paid to shareholders despite the company experiencing negative cash flow of $4.9 billion during that same period. What's even more interesting is that Icon even grew the dividend of this company three times during that exact same period. And so the conclusion that this report comes to is that one of the only ways Icon Enterprises could be paying these massive dividends is by issuing new shares of their stock and then using the funds from those new shares to pay their quarterly dividend, hence why it's being called a Ponzi scheme. They point out that this company's investment portfolio has lost 53% of its value since 2014, which does raise a lot of questions because I've never seen a situation where a closed-end fund or a business development company or an MREIT could lose half its value and still grow their dividend. I discuss BDCs and closed-end funds all the time on this channel, and even a moderate continual loss can result in the fund needing to reduce their dividend. If that wasn't bad enough, this report also shows that Carl's actually shorting the market, basically meaning he's betting the market is going to go down this year. In reality, up to this point, the market is actually slightly up this year, which has resulted in them losing $272 million in just this year alone, according to this report. 
One more highlight from this report is that Icon Enterprises actually has a lot of debt that's going to be due. Next year, you can see that IEP is going to have about $1.1 billion worth of debt maturing, which is going to need to be renewed. If interest rates are still going to be high next year, then this is only going to add more strain to this company's bottom line. But fortunately, this company does have over $2.3 billion in cash on their balance sheet. To summarize this report, it does raise a lot of red flags for this company. This is still an ongoing story that's still developing, but as of the making of this video right now, Carl hasn't really addressed the issues. He did release a statement on May 4th, but it was a very generic statement that doesn't really add many details. According to Carl, quote, The fundamentals of our business and our belief in the activist paradigm that has served us well for decades remains unchanged. We obviously disagree with the inflammatory assertions in the Hindenburg Report, and we intend to respond at length and to vigorously defend IEP and its unit holders. As we stated previously, we believe that IEP's performance will speak for itself over the long term as it always has. But as we await a detailed response from Carl, what should our view be on Icon Enterprises stock? Is this the perfect time to invest in this company considering the massive dividend that it's now offering? As tempting as it might be to capture that insane dividend, this report does raise some genuine concerns about the state of Icon Enterprises. We don't know when Carl's going to talk about the accusations, but hopefully this week he will be able to provide some more details. At the same time though, Carl Icahn's about as shrewd as they come, honestly. He's the definition of a fighter, and considering his legacy is under attack, I think it's going to result in a very good response from him. Reading this report made me remember a feud that Carl had with Bill Ackman, who attempted to short one of Carl's holdings, which was Herbalife. In the end, Carl came out on top and proved Bill Ackman wrong. It's also good to know that Carl Icahn and his son Brett, who works for him, own roughly 85% of all shares of this company. So it's a pretty big source of their wealth, and they're going to fight hard to protect its reputation. For the time being, the markets have declared Hindenburg the winner, considering IEP's sharp price decline. But as I mentioned before, if you plan to invest in this company, you need to have absolute faith in Carl Icahn. His son Brett has worked for him for many years, and he should have enough experience in eventually taking over the company someday. But in regards to this stock right now, the best advice I could give to someone who might be interested would be this. You should only invest if you're a fan of Carl Icahn and his investing strategy, considering his son will hopefully pursue the same strategy that made his father wealthy. It's important to not chase dividend yields, but rather pick companies that are fundamentally sound. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with waiting until Carl addresses all of these accusations. As a disclaimer, if you do decide to invest in this stock, you need to keep in mind that it is a master limited partnership. When you invest in an MLP, you don't get a 1099 div like virtually every other dividend stock. Instead, you'll receive in the mail an additional tax form if you're in the US called a K-1. These things are known for being difficult to understand and you have to include them in your tax return. I bring this up because I've seen people recommend MLPs without mentioning this and investors will file their taxes only to later on get this form in late March. So do your research on this topic if you are serious about investing in IEP and have never invested in an MLP before. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.